let's go on a guided tour through all of the realms of Malifaux. Now, in the Malifaux lore, there are many different dimensions or planes of existence. It's actually not exactly clear what they are, so we're going to use the word realms to describe them. And there are a bunch of these realms, and they get pretty weird, but let's start off pretty simple and talk about Earthside. Now, this realm in Malifaux is the one that you might be the most familiar with compared to real life. Earthside is where the humans come from, and the history of human civilization very closely parallels the history of real life human civilization with some significant differences. Notably, in Malifaux's history, magic is real, and there's also been some limited interactions between Earthside and some of the other realms that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And as a result of all of this, the power dynamics that have developed over the course of the last handful of centuries have diverged pretty significantly from what we know about in real life. Some civilizations had contact with Malifaux and acquired soul stones, which allowed them to develop more advanced technology and be more of a power player in Earth's conflicts. The history of colonialism is a little bit different, and in particular, starting in the 1800s, it diverges pretty significantly from real-life history. This was when the first breach opened to Malifaux and soul stones started flooding the market on Earth, causing a huge power struggle and a world war. As a result of this world war, the guild emerged as a world-dominating power, and as a result, it really shook up the way that the map of Earth looks compared to what we know from real life. With the guild trying to exert its influence and control trade, especially soulstone trade, between the different nations on Earth. Now, all in all, I would say this is a pretty pleasant place to visit. There are certainly dangers out there, and the guild can definitely have a bit of a heavy hand in its dealings. But one thing to note is that the presence of racism and sexism is pretty diminished in this world. The guild has its fingers in lots of places around the world, and they prioritize economics and exerting their control, so they don't really have time for silly things like racism or sexism. They see all people as equals as long as they can be bent to the guild's will. And as a result, the culture is a lot different than the culture you might be familiar with from this time period in our real-life timeline. Of course, depending on your station in life, not everybody is going to have a great time. But it's not going to be uncommon to see women in positions of power and people from very different backgrounds working together and cooperating peacefully. Somehow, even the Chinese and Japanese and Vietnamese all seem to get along. So that should tell you a lot. Now, moving over to the other side of the breach, we have Malifaux. Malifaux is the name of both the realm as well as the main city that you will deal with on this side of the breach. And Malifaux is going to be somewhat similar to Earthside, but with some more danger involved. There's a breathable atmosphere and a reasonable climate, although the presence of magic is much more powerful in Malifaux, which can lead to some unexpected things. Things are going to look a little bit different in Malifaux because there are two moons, and they have a profound impact on the ebbing and flowing of magic in the world. The stars in the sky over Malifaux are strange, and don't seem to make much sense to anyone who observes them. We don't know how big the planet that Malifaux is on actually is, but we do know that there's at least one other continent that hasn't yet been explored. You can find many similar biomes to what you might be familiar with from Earth, but notably, if you travel to any of those biomes, you need to look out for the wildlife that you might encounter there. Many animals in Malifaux are similar to ones you might be familiar with from Earth, but they tend to be much more dangerous and more aggressive than the Earthside variants. On top of that, there are intelligent creatures that inhabit Malifaux, including the Neverborn, demon-like creatures who will happily hunt and eat humans, as well as the inhabitants of the bayou known as gremlins, who can range anywhere from friendly and comical to extremely dangerous and unpredictable. So if you're traveling to Malifaux, you will probably want to stay in Malifaux City, but unfortunately, even there, you will be living under the strict thumb of the guild's rule. Most people who live in Malifaux City are laborers who work in poor conditions in the mines, and the homelessness across the city is very high, especially among children and orphans. In addition to that, there are necromancers and terrorists to be worried about, but maybe the most dangerous presence in Malifaux is that of the tyrants, ancient and extremely powerful entities who are bent on acquiring more power and ascending to a godlike state. Any one of them can and will be an existential threat to humans, and as a result of all of this, I would say that Malifaux is not a place that you want to visit unless you have the right connections or a substantial amount of money and you can stay in some of the safer areas of the city. Definitely don't go venturing outside of the city, and do your best to avoid any of the native creatures of Malifaux, sentient or otherwise. Now, unfortunately, that is the end of the relatively pleasant places to visit in Malifaux because next we're going to talk about the Dreaming Realm or the Nightmare Realm. The Dreaming Realm was originally the domain of the Dreaming Ones, a species of the Fae and one of the original inhabitants of Malifaux. They were able to go into the Dreaming Realm, where they could see civilizations far beyond their world, which inspired them to build Malifaux City itself, which is a mishmash of all of those civilizations they got to view. This seems like a peaceful and interesting place, but eventually one of the Dreaming Ones, the tyrant known as Nightmare, started hunting his kin through the Dreaming World, feeding on their magic and tearing them apart. Now the Dreaming Ones are almost entirely eradicated, and the realm of dreams has turned into more of a realm of nightmares. Some humans have even developed the ability to manipulate the nightmare realm, and occasionally, their nightmares can actually manifest in the real world and alter reality itself. Visiting the nightmare realm would not be advisable, 
as you're likely to encounter many horrible creatures who will feed on your fear and might even follow you back to the real world when you wake up. Even worse, you might encounter the tyrant Nightmare himself, or the boy who he follows around, who has a particularly strong ability to control the nightmares and manifest them in reality. The Shadow Realm is a mysterious place where darkness and light seem to be inverted. It exists between other realms and appears to run parallel to the real world, where everything looks the same except there's light in the darkness, and vice versa. Here, everyone's shadow is actually a sentient creature that's imprisoned and dragged around by your normal corporeal form. They struggle to get free and occasionally can manifest in the real world as a dangerous creature of darkness. Even the shadows of non-human creatures can come alive, and the ones that come from non-sentient animals are known to be easier to tame. Some secret organizations have invented technology that can harness these shadow creatures, forcing them to stay in the real world for a longer period under the control of a master. Traveling to the Shadow Realm is extremely dangerous, and even those that have survived the ordeal and acquired some level of control and influence over the creatures there still have to be on constant lookout for a creature that might drag them back into their darkness or destroy them completely. Venturing into the Shadow Realm would probably be the end of any normal person, but things are only going to get worse as we continue. The Beyond is a barren wasteland of dry sand and jagged mountains. There's little water in the Beyond, and it's an overall inhospitable place for anything that lives there. No significant structures can exist there, and even worse, the passage of time is irregular. Taking just a few steps might take you an eternity, or only a second, and after traveling a few meters, you might find that you've gone a great distance more than you expected. As a result, mere existence in the Beyond feels like torture. This realm is inhabited by creatures known as the Oni, and their inherently magical nature makes it very difficult for them to survive outside of the beyond. The Oni are violent and are constantly at war with each other, with weaker individuals following stronger warlords who try to amass power. Traveling to and from the beyond is extremely difficult and requires a great amount of energy, and the torturous nature of the existence there means that the Oni are always trying to cross through to find reprieve. Some are able to accomplish this by possessing another creature, while others are able to do it by crossing through a gate a set of jewel-like structures that create tunnels between the beyond and somewhere else. The Oni have gained access to Earth a few times throughout history, and though some of their kind are benevolent and kind, most of them are warlike and violent. They've tried invading in the East several times, but so far their efforts have always been thwarted. Very few people have traveled to the beyond, and it might have been the least desirable of all the realms to visit if it weren't for the Realm of Death. In the realm of death resides the grave spirit, the personification of death itself, whose sole purpose seems to be destroying other forms of life. When a portal was partially opened between the realm of death and Malifo, the grave spirit's essence seeped into the world, corrupting everything it touched. It also granted access to necromantic magic and the ability to create undeath. The grave spirit itself seems to be the weakness of the tyrants, and in ancient times, it led to their defeat and loss of their corporeal forms. It's even been foreseen that there's a possible future where the Grave Spirit will kill the tyrants once and for all. Centuries later, another attempt was made to open the portal to the Realm of Death, and the Grave Spirit tried to make its way through, which would have led to the death of every being in Malifo. Luckily, this attempt was stopped, but needless to say, it would be a terrible idea to even gain access to the Realm of Death, never mind traveling there. Now, if you have a bad time in any one of these other realms, you might find yourself in the Spirit Realm. This is a place full of the spirits of the deceased as they transition into the afterlife. It looks similar to the living world, but everything is covered in a sheen of gloom, and the sky is jet black with swirling ominous clouds. All of the spirits travel slowly to the Sanzu River, and once they cross, they can never get back to the living world again. There are ways to access the spirit world without dying, though it's quite difficult, and some powerful necromancers have been known to pull spirits back from the spirit world to do their bidding. A secret organization, known as the Court of Two, has learned ways to bind spirits from the spirit realm and turn them into an army, all at the command of one man. In addition to these discrete realms, there are many other places in between realms. This is where a wayward traveler might find themselves when transitioning from Earth to Malifo, a place where monsters may spring forth from, a place where you might be cursed to walk the paths for eternity, or a void and empty nothingness that you might be banished into. But the moral of the story is that traveling might be a bit overrated, and we should all be thankful that we are right where we are. So that is your guided tour of all of the realms of Malifo. I want to give a huge shout out to Swarmlord, Trey, Addis, and Retnab for helping me brainstorm for this video. Don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. Share it around with folks you think might find it interesting and check out all of the links in the description below. Huge thank you to the extremely cool kids here on Patreon, the Steam Howard Scoundrels, Dogmatize, Devin, and the Spilled Paint Pot. And thanks for watching.